Okay, so what I want to talk about is what possessed me to open a 2,000 square foot store on State Street during a recession with no experience. Um, <laughs> I'd been a creative writer for over 15 years and I loved it and I was lucky to get paid to make things up. Um, but in the spring of 2010, I realized I was ready to do something much more connected to my community and to the world at large. So when I started imagining what that might be, this quote popped into my head, one of my favorites. And for me, beauty is not only made by nature, but by hand. And I've spent a lot of happy times wandering through independent little stores filled with imagination and color and humor and all these artists who've committed their lives to their vision and to spreading joy and awareness that really inspired me. So I decided to open a store of my own. I had this idea of creating a place for locals and visitors to discover beautiful things made with integrity. That was my chant. Beautiful things made with integrity. Everyone said, what is it going to be? That's all I could say. Um, but for me, that's handcrafted or fair trade or upcycled. Um, or just inspired. So handcrafted is obvious, and it's the lifeblood of plum, from a bar of soap to a necklace to a table. When it's made by somebody who loves what they're doing, it has a completely different energy and appeal than something mass-produced. And it's also much easier on the ecosystem than goods that are produced by a machine. Um, fair trade is trickier. The fair trade movement is definitely a work in progress, the more I've learned about it. But the goal is to establish healthy working conditions and responsible methods of production and better environmental practices so that people uh, in developing countries can invest in themselves and their communities and compete in the global marketplace. So it makes a big deal when you buy something fair trade. Um, and upcycled, I had to throw this in there because people say, what's the difference between upcycled and recycled? Like, I made it up. I did not make it up. Um, recycling would be turning glass into another kind of glass, and upcycling would be turning something people consider trash into something that people want. And my new favorite quote from an artist that's going to be there in the fall is, trash is the failure of imagination. <laughs> and then another huge factor in this vision was Santa Barbara because I had plenty of people tell me, if you want to do this, do it online. Try it online, test it online. I did not just want to sell stuff. I wanted to create an environment and I wanted to create a Santa Barbara experience for visitors and for locals. I wanted, to, as the kids would say, to represent. Um, and the icing on this cake is me uh, loving to give a gift. I was always as excited to give a gift as to get one. And um, I remember those shoes and socks totally. Um, <laughs> But um, I really, you know, I love to find something interesting that I love and that I know someone else will love and someone you love will love, and it's all about the love. So, um, and then the candle on the cake was that it seriously felt like a calling. And I kept saying that to people, this feels like a calling. But I had only thought of a calling as being something spiritual or at the very least nonprofit. But I literally saw this, <laughs> and it is so far. <laughs> I literally saw this as a way of being of service. You know, I wanted to be of service to art and the community. But I did look up what a definition of a calling is, and it is a strong impulse, and I, it is, I've never heard it be a cat in heat, but um, that's what Merriam-Webster says. <laughs> and I kept joking that if it had only said a dog in heat, I could make a whole passionate bitch speech, but it didn't say that. So, um, but it was a calling, but it was also about using my gifts. So none of us are good at everything, but we all have something unique we're really good at. Um, and, but it's also not even just about that. It's also about doing something that's called for. So it's not just being your calling. It's not just a gift. It's something that's called for. It's something your community or your world needs. It doesn't need a fish to learn how to climb a tree. And the opposite of being called, which we've all had, is um, encountering the locked door. You have something that isn't your calling or that isn't called for, but you will not leave that door. You are going to knock on that door till it opens, and you just have to ask yourself, when you should stop knocking on that door and try another one. So, With Plum, um, the doors felt wide open. Once I committed, it was literally like riding a wave and trying not to fall off. Um, within the first month, I ran into a friend who came on board to be the kind of creative director person, and I started searching for uh, products and searching the hearts of landlords for a lease, which was really, really difficult. Um, and then um, the store opened in October. So I started in June. It opened in October. That is an insane feat, and luckily I didn't know how insane it was. I had the twin blessings of ignorance and determination. Um, but yeah, so we started in June and we opened in October, and now we're coming up on two years in business. So that's great. But I don't want to mislead you. <laughs> Creating Plum was delicious and amazing, but it was not a piece of cake. Um, I had a moment when I had $40,000 in merchandise coming to a storefront that I had signed a lease for that they gave to a chain the night before. 
So then I, it had nowhere to go, and I was in my driveway crying. Um, but no matter what you're doing, <laughs> you know, having a baby, running a marathon, you definitely hit points where all you want to know is whose fucking idea was this. And I've had a lot of that. <laughs> Pardon my French. So, but if I had anything to tell people who want to pursue something, it's that you do not need to know how, but you have to know why. You have to know why it matters to you. You, don't have, you have to know why it matters to other people. You have to know why, and that's what's going to get you through the dark nights. And you have to have a clear vision of what success looks like, again, for you. What does it look like daily? What does it look like in a few months? What does it look like at the end? What does it mean? What are you trying to do? And that'll keep you going. It can change, but you should always have that as an element to keep it alive. Um, and on the final one is you have to surround yourself with people who share your vision because all those super helpful people who don't want you to get hurt will tell you it's a terrible idea and you need to keep those people away from you when you're building your dream. I swear to God, it's like you don't tell people you're pregnant until you're far enough along because they will really, really keep you from watering and seeding your dream. So if you surround yourself with people who share your vision, when you lose your courage or focus, they help keep you going. So. Now I get to be around these amazing people, like this little Aaliyah, who um, was inspired by this hand-done little whale, fell in love, we fell in love with her. And um, I have people giving gifts from Plum that are bringing joy to other people or buying gifts that remind them of their trip to Santa Barbara, and I literally get to support art and artists and, and inspire people every day. So someone told me that the fear of failing is what keeps people from going after something they want, and I think that this quote is a great antidote for that. And I had the luck and willingness to create something amazing that's meaningful to me and to others, and I recommend it highly. So. Yeah.